but well, these are the ones that get really big. I feel like it's just gonna be one of those days. Go on, seal. Five, twenty seven, twenty nine. How's it going, man? Picking that up. Go ahead and throw that thing on for you. I have a cush core if you don't mind. Yeah, you can get out here. All right, so when I was at Blue Mountain, I got a flat and uh, sealed itself. But ever since then, it's just always been uh, <laughs> becoming a problem at the worst possible time. So putting a new uh, tire on, I'm actually putting a downhill casing tire on, which should uh, solve all my problems. Yeah, dude. dude, thank you so much. Have fun out there, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, we're at Thunder and uh, I've made a few updates to the bike. As you can see, we got a bunch of yellow going on now. Got some yellow on the, the accent colors of the Noble Wheels. I think I might do like one or two yellow touches throughout the frame, but yeah, I really like how the yellow accents really made this uh, bike pop. All right, let's, uh, let's go do some riding. In front of us is uh, Senor Ryan Bernie. All right, so Bernie's an engineer for uh, GT Cannondale. <laughs> and he could easily race pro if he still raced. He's one of the fastest juniors around, but he decided he wanted to focus more on the engineering side of things. Today is kind of like a GT family ride. So everyone with us today is, uh, has some relationship to GT. They're either employees, engineers, which I guess is an employee, or they are uh, racers. The cool thing about GT is that it is an East Coast based company, which there aren't many of. You feeling warmed up now? All right, so now uh, Dylan Conti is in front of me and he was in my Blue Mountain video. So here's a cool fun fact. Dylan and Bernie were like, are the same age so they grew up racing against each other in juniors and they'd go toe to toe whether who would win what the only thing's all about cutting the insides Very convenient that they have this right there. Uh oh, where'd my pass go? I, I have to go get another pass. All right, without context, this part's a little confusing, so let me try to explain what's going on. So when I was at the bike shop getting my tire changed over, one of the employees handed me some stickers to hide around the mountain. All right, we're hiding the stickers. They are going to be right here well they were in the same pocket as my pass was so i must have dropped my pass or gave away my pass as well uh and since all my friends were already on the lift well i had to go in get my pass and then i had to go chase them down all right let's see if my group's still here well it was a pleasure talking with you guys i gotta chase some friends down apparently okay if i had to guess they were probably doing trillium so we'll go this way left oh well perfect I was guessing you guys were on your way to Trillium I'm following Luis it's all right you know how to make a damn good bike gone so bony wait 
Were you behind us right there? Kind of. Um, we thought you were at the bottom still. No, 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 that's fine. Like, I was able to get my uh, pass really quickly. Oh, okay, good. Okay. This is probably one of my favorite trails here. It's like, it's a blue trail, but it's got like some good technical and some good flowy sections. Some good bomb holes and turns. dirt on the show then remember <laughs> oh god So this is a trail that, as far as I know, I've actually never done. Okay, this is, this is actually really cool. Oh, there's Fort Hill right there. We might hit that later, we'll see. Apparently they still have some more work to do it before it's fully finished. COVID's definitely put a little bit of a damper on the progress. If I had to rate right, right now, based on my feeling of riding, if I had to rate Highland, Thunder, Coington, Thunder would be on top. I agree. I, I think it is the best. I think it's the best bike park in the Northeast. And it's just like, it just has that little bit of extra something special where there's a lot of trails. There's a lot of gems hidden in the woods and it, it, you can do anything. You can have the gnarliest downhill or the smoothest smooth line. This is in a really nice shape. <laughs> oh, you kicked up a rock. Oh, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> is that a hawk? <laughs> At first I was like barking like a chicken. I'm like, no, you're not a chicken. So one of the interesting things about this lift, a lot of people don't realize, but this lift is not detachable. So they cannot run this lift that fast. So one of the biggest complaints here is the lift is too slow. Well, one of the reasons why is that there's a law limiting how quickly this lift can run. All right, so we just got done some lunch, got some food in our bellies. Now we're gonna go do some uh, more laps. Anytime you take a break and get back into it, it takes a little while to warm back up. So that lift right there, they also have bike racks on. So they sometimes run it when this place gets super busy. Haley 
he's ripping. Okay, we're gonna do Billy Badger. We're gonna drop in over here again, but this time we're gonna stay left. I think I flatted. Did I flat? Uh, I did. You did. I thought it was me. I'm like, how did I get a fly? Just put a, like a downhill casing on. <laughs> Hybrid line. <laughs> Oh, you got me. <laughs> In the long position, too. I know. It's taking a while to get used to that. My bars are crooked. They are? Yeah, they're like way crooked. <laughs> oh, forgot about that puddle. Hollywood now. You want to do Hollywood? Okay, I'll do Hollywood this time. Alright. <laughs> I wonder if the boots are still here. They used to uh, just keep some boots on the side of this jump for some reason. Ah, uh, they're there. I've been trying no handers in my backyard. Did they scare the crap out of me? So, I need a. Alright, alright. Okay, okay. With a lot more hang time, it's way easier. suicide now. That was actually a pretty big game changer for me. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like much, but for me that was actually huge progress. It's a drop, like a rainbow jump, then a drop. Do you still have to slow down quite a bit for the dirt to dirt? Yeah, I mean I, I slowed down before the drop and then I actually braked like right in the transition of it and then I pumped. Just gotta trust yourself not to hit your brakes, which right. sometimes like that's hard for me to do because like you come up to the lips and like you're like holy they God. are Bit. Yeah, you're like, that's a jump. Yeah, like yeah. I, I've never experienced anything like it on a bike. 
All right, Phil here, and I wanted to address something before you drop in. So if you're watching this and you're getting the sense I'm a little scared or apprehensive, then you're absolutely right. These jumps are way bigger than the jumps I get to hit on a regular basis. And it's not that I'm unfamiliar with jumps. I started BMX dirt jumping when I was five years old. In BMX, as long as you hit the first dirt jump fine, you'll have the perfect amount of speed for the next jump. You don't need to pedal or break in between jumps. But in mountain biking, the jumps are built in such a way where you can come up short on one jump and then way over shoot the next there's a lot of variability especially between different bike parks and it's this variability that's really scary to me and it's led to a lot of really bad experiences i've had a lot of close calls and bad crashes from overshooting jumps so it's not that i'm scared of coming up short i'm scared of overshooting the jumps because overshooting the jumps is far more dangerous in my experience anytime i approach jumps i'm not familiar with especially big jumps I approach them with an abundance of caution. So with that said, let's uh, jump back into the video. You ready? Yeah, let's do oh, it. Let me get out the fuck out of the way here. They've made these easier or something, but I feel less scared to hit them this year than I have in the past. But well, these are the ones that get really big. Whoops. All right, I have not hit this. Oh, I haven't even seen that one. <laughs> okay, I have to say, it's not as bad as I remember, but it's still like... It's still a little, boom, the last boom, boom. couple are exciting. That one's huge. Yeah. I grab brake pedal, grab brake pedal. I was like, all right, we got this. All right, so you're kind of in the, uh, you're kind of in the same position as me. We both grew up racing downhill. <laughs> We're not unfamiliar with jumps, but what about this? I don't know. I felt like the speed's really high. Yeah. And the lips aren't as steep and like familiar dirt jumpy. So I feel like you're more like, it's hard to gauge what's gonna happen. You don't know if you're going into something that looks like this. Well, plus I've never hit it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like- Well, you, you didn't even look at it. really <laughs> deep on the second to last one or right before the, the, big, the, the first hip. big one. The hip, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Oh God. But yeah. I'm actually happy because then it was like perfect to transition. I would like to do that again. That was great. Yeah, let's do it again. We're going to do it again. So here's a little fun fact about this trail. Fort Hill is kind of a weird name, but it's actually built or named after a brewery called Fort Hill Brewery. The owner wanted like a big jump trail, so he funded this trail, which is pretty cool. Dylan's gang sideways. Yeah. Whoops. A little deep on that one. All right, brake check this time. Still a little bit deep. Oh, that was a scary whip. Woo oh. You got sideways pretty good. You're more you're more daring than I was. That was fun. I apparently need more pedals than the last one. There's one jump I definitely overshot quite a bit. I just like choked up on most of them. I'm uh, happy I got that out of the way. Those jumps really intimidate me. Uh, okay, I know where we are now. Oh, I think <laughs> I was just a little bit back into this trail now. This trail was actually pretty tricky. Yeah. It's deceiving.
these are actually part, parts of trails I struggle with the most. Flat and just, a lot of things just to like perpetually slow you down. Whew. It's like a little bit more finesse and it's hard to do that when like you're working really hard to try to maintain your speed. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Dude, I have to say, I think like this year, maybe even last year, but this year I feel like you've really kind of stepped in to like your comfort zone and like <laughs> gone to where I feel like you've ever like always wanted to be. A little bit, yeah. I had glimpses of it like kind of, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. But you got injured, right? Yeah, a couple, bring a good one between the neck and knee, uh, shoulders and stuff. And it's just like taking a while to, uh, get back but i'm having so much fun on the bike it's like it, it shows yeah it's cool thank you all right so that wraps up a really good day i i'm stoked i finally hit fort hill again honestly like i know you think i'm like invincible sometimes but i'm not like there are things that really scare me and fort hill is just one of those i didn't grow up hitting big jumps i hit jumps and those jumps are just much bigger than i ever got used to so for me that's uh that's something I've never been comfortable with, so I'm pretty pumped. All right, if you haven't seen the last video where I'm riding at Blue Mountain, go check that one out, because that one's really good too. And uh, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. As always, my name is Phil Metz. Thanks for playing Rex with me today. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>